Hello everyone and welcome to Fuzzmaster Games coverage of the Mists of Pandaria talent changes. In each of these videos we will be going over the new talent trees for each class as well as the level 87 talent if applicable. In this video we have Shaman. In the level 15 bracket we have Nature's Guardian, Stone Bulwark, and Astral Shift. Nature's Guardian, whenever a damaging attack brings you below 30% health, your maximum health is increased by 25% for 10 seconds, and your threat level towards the attacker is reduced. This effect cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds. Stone Bulwark Totem, 8% of base mana, 1 minute cooldown, summons a Stone Bulwark Totem with 5 health at the feet of the caster for 30 seconds that grants the caster a absorbing shield. And Astral Shift, 2 minute cooldown, seek Haven by shifting partially into the Elemental Planes, reducing damage taken by 40% for 6 seconds. These seem more like a thing that should be somewhere down here more, instead of the level 15 thing, the first thing that you get to pick. Just for leveling purposes, probably go Stone Bulwark Totem just because it's gonna... It's gonna help save your ass by the shield that it grants. In the level 30 bracket, we have Frozen Power, Earth Grab Totem, and Wind Walk Totem. Frozen Power, your Frost Shock, now also roots the target in ice for 5 seconds. Your Earth Grab Totem is 5% of base mana, 30 second cooldown. It summons an Earth Grab Totem with 100 health at the feet of the caster for 20 seconds. The totem pulses every 2 seconds, causing roots to ensnare the legs of all enemies within 10 yards for 5 seconds, preventing movement. Enemies that have already been rooted once by the totem will instead have their movement speed reduced by 50%. And it replaces your Earthbind totem. And Windwalk totem, 6% of base mana, 1 minute cooldown, summons an air totem within five health at, with 5 health at the feet of the caster for 6 seconds, granting raid members within 40 yards immunity to movement impairing effects. I would go with Earth Grab Totem, lock everybody down and get the hell out of there. Level 45, you get Call of the Elements, Totemic Restoration or Totemic Projection. Call of the Elements is on an 8 minute cooldown and when activated it immediately finishes the cooldown on all totems with a base cooldown shorter than 5 minutes. Why is that on an 8 minute cooldown? That needs to be reduced. Totemic Restoration is when a totem is replaced or destroyed before its duration expires naturally. Its cooldown is reduced in proportion to the lost duration, up to a maximum of 50% of the full cooldown. And Totemic Projection, 40 yard range, 10 second cooldown, relocates your active totems to the specified location. That's something that should have been in for a long time. And I'm actually going to go with that, because moving your totems to a different spot, it works out great. In the level 60 bracket, we have Elemental Mastery, Ancestral Swiftness, and Echo of the Elements. Elemental Mastery is a 2 minute cooldown, and you call upon elemental forces, empowering you with 30% haste for 20 seconds. Ancestral Swiftness is on a 1 minute cooldown, and your next spell with a base casting time less than 10 seconds becomes instant, and passively increases spell and melee haste by 5%. And Echo of the Elements, when one of your spells causes direct damage or healing, you have a chance to gain Echo of the Elements, duplicating that spell's effect. Echo of the Elements is the greatest thing, like, you can have the double chain lightning go off, or the double lightning bolt, or your heal could go off twice. Based on these, doubling the effect of any of those spells, it's, you have a chance to gain Echo of the Elements, so I need to see what the chance is to make a real final judgment on that, but for now, definitely Echo of the Elements. In the level 75 bracket, you have Healing Tide Totem, Ancestral Guidance, and Conductivity. Healing Tide Totem, 8% of base mana, 3 minute cooldown, and it summons a water totem with 10% of the caster's health at the feet of the caster for 10 seconds. The Healing Tide Totem pulses every 2 seconds, healing the 5 most injured raid members within 40 yards for 34.63. Ancestral Guidance is on a 2 minute cooldown, and when you deal direct damage or healing for the next 10 seconds, 40% of that amount is copied as a healing to nearby injured party or raid member. And Conductivity, when you cast Healing Wave, Greater Healing Wave, Healing Surge, or Lightning Bolt on a target located within your healing reign, 
allies standing within the healing lane share healing equal to 20% of the initial damage or healing done. So your healing rain could be healing your allies and give you a chance to do more damage to things in that same area. Ancestral Guidance copied with Echo of the Elements if they both kind of pop at the same time. You get the double heal from Echo of the Elements and if they both pop Ancestral... If they both pop the Ancestral Guidance effect, it's going to be even more useful. The Healing Tide Totem 10% of the caster's health. Other things are more useful. I'm going to go with Ancestral Guidance. In the level 90 bracket, we have Unleashed Fury, Primal Elementalist, and Elemental Blast. In Unleashed Fury, you have your Elemental Weapon imbues are empowered, granting additional effects when triggered with Unleashed Weapon. If you have Flame, one, flame Tongue Weapon on, it increases the enemy target's damage taken from your Lightning Bolt and Lava Burst abilities by 25% for 10 seconds. If you have Wind Fury Weapon on for 8 seconds, your melee auto attacks can trigger Static Shock. If you have Earth Living Weapon on, it further increases the effectiveness of your next single target heal on the targeted ally by 50%. If you have Frostbrand Weapon on, you leech heat from the enemy target, gaining 50% movement speed for 4 seconds. And if you have Rock Biter Weapon on, you take 40% reduced damage from the enemy target for 5 seconds. Primal Elementalist, your Earth and Fire Elemental Totems draw forth powerful Primal Elementals directly from Elemental Flames. These Servitors are 50% more powerful than regular Elementals, act as pets directly under your control, and gain additional abilities. Do they last as long as the previous pets, or are they permanent now? Or what? Are they permanent as long as the totem exists? I'm not sure that. If you know, please let me know. And Elemental Blast, 40 yard range, 2 second cast, 12 second cooldown. Harness and direct the raw power of the elements towards an enemy target, dealing 3734 to 4339 elemental damage and increasing the caster's critical strike, haste, or mastery by 5% for 8 seconds. All of these extra things here, all of it, is going to make me go Unleashed Fury. Then we scroll down to the wonderful level 87 talent, which is Ascendance. It costs 5.2% of base mana, and it's on a 3-minute cooldown. And the Shaman surrenders its own physical form to the power of the elements, transforming into a being of raw elemental energy for 15 seconds. If you are elemental spec while in the form of a flame ascendant, Lava Burst has no cooldown and Chain Lightning is empowered to become Lava Beam. Enhancement while in the form of an air ascendant, auto attacks and storm strike deal pure nature damage and have a 30 yard range. And if in restoration, well, in the form of a water ascendant, all healing done is duplicated and distributed evenly among nearby allies. Great town. Amazing tech. Like, that's that's all you can really set. Three minute cooldown for all that extra shit. I am all in. All in. And that is it for the shaman coverage. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. If you think you know better than me on something, I would be glad to hear your knowledge because I am most of the time an idiot. Please also leave a comment below. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you really liked the video, please subscribe to my channel. I thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.